I think one thing that we have to keep in mind is that community development is economic development. Um, you know, and, and when we sit here and when we're thinking about uh, elected officials and who, who to fill the ballot out for, I think the one thing we have to keep in mind is that new ideas bring fresh starts. Um, you know, when I think about the affordable housing um, and the initiatives and how we're going to support that, I think we have to remember that we have a, dem a, a delegation um, on the state level and we have federal partners that we can need to continue to engage with, with as elected officials um, on the municipal level. And, you know, it's those relationships that have helped Worcester move forward. You look all around the city, we have the imprint of our congressmen and women, we have our imprints of our um, state representatives and senators, and we need to continue to um, engage with them on behalf of the city. There will always be competing priorities here in Worcester. Um, and it's always going to be about the political will. What is the will of the council? Each of us as counselors is one vote. And as a social worker, I've been a social worker here in the city for 20 years, the one thing that I'm able to do um, is I know how to bring forward and establish relationships um, and try to reach a common goal. And that's what I'm very proud of that I've been able to do as a counselor. Finding common ground, listening, learning and then leading. Um, and that's something that I'll continue to do as a city councilor, and this will always be a priority, putting children and families first. This is something that's funded by block grant money that comes into the city of Worcester, it's de designated to housing, so a lot of that's already designated. And downtown is a neighborhood too, people should remember that. And again, it is a neighborhood, and, uh, and it does have a lot of mixed housing in downtown. But we can have a good mix of market rate, affordable, we can prioritize this in the funding by just talking to the city manager. We have public hearings on this. Unfortunately, the federal government shrinks those block grant monies every single year that come to the city of Worcester. Yeah, but there's other there's state money, there's federal money available for housing, and we're going to continue with it. The neighborhoods is what really represents the city. What we did up there, I mentioned a few projects earlier. We were up at Union Hill. Union Hill, we put a lot of money up at Union Hill to make that neighborhood stronger, better. We put in the you know, streets, sidewalks. We put in a, a police department, put like a, uh, like a mini police force, a little department, I should say, up at the uh, up at, uh, uh, Union Hill that walked around next week, you know, community policing is very important up there. They had a lieutenant, uh, you know, several officers, and a sergeant. That what makes it made a difference in the neighborhood. When you put in infrastructure, when you put in police, people were very happy in that neighborhood because you could see that neighborhood start to turn around. And the more money you invest in housing, Talk about Oak Hill CDC up there. More money you put to invest in housing and infrastructure, it changes the whole neighborhood. So it's just not about the housing itself, it's the infrastructure that comes with it. It's the infrastructure that comes with it. It's your schools, and we are investing a lot of money into our the public schools. It's your streets, it's your sidewalks, it's your lights. We've invested uh, a number of, a large amount of money into new lights, the LED lighting system. All this goes into making a stronger and better neighborhood. Thank you. I, I would call for an increase of affordable housing to the 20% mark within the next 10 years because I think that's just going to be very important for our city. Um, and the, the short-term uh, tax incentives that we could gear towards affordable housing, um, I think that would spur a lot of development. I, I recently moved from Richmond, Virginia, and that program was in place there, but they had tax incentives. People would come in, renovate a home, and then they would sell that home. The tax incentive transfers to the new owner. So it allows people to buy a home with a little bit of an advantage there, and it allows uh, um, more development than the city can do with the block grants, and we can do a lot of good stuff, and we just covered those things. But it, it allows uh, uh, commercial development, or excuse me, uh, private development companies to come in, do a lot of work in the neighborhoods for us, and then that benefit transfers to the people of those neighborhoods. Um, and again, the, the, the raising the percentage of the affordable housing as we're, we're looking at tips and reviewing uh, uh, the tax incremental, incremental funding uh, for big projects, I think we need to keep an eye on that percentage that is going to be affordable housing and make sure that, that uh, is in line with our, our master plan. So the question is, how should the city prioritize uh, the funding, construction, and does support for me? I'm trying to 
get back to where the question started. So how should we do it? First, we should be doing looking at the data, but we should also be having person-to-person -person conversations, talking to people about the needs, um, and then we should also be looking at things like transportation. Uh, should we be building or, or reinvigorating neighborhoods that don't have transportation um, uh, in, in that neighborhood? Or should we be saying, look, we want you to be able to afford the housing here, and we want you to have the ability to be able to go to a job so that you can continue to improve what you, you have, that you can buy your own home. So I think there's a lot of different factors that we need to look into, but I think it's what's really important is making sure that we're building homes for people who can uh, work in the jobs of the future. And so it's not just building low-income housing or workforce housing. It's looking at what do we need for our community to live, to thrive, and to grow. And I think that's the other thing is that if, if you just look at it as, well, we've got to have more low-income housing. That doesn't work for me. What is the housing going to do? Is it going to create a neighborhood? Is it going to create an environment where people are going to be working together, they're going to be learning together, they're going to be able to have um, opportunity to get into new jobs? Those are some of the things that I think that we really need to start looking at. And I think the city has to prioritize it, not just one neighborhood at a time, but one uh, need at a time. And I think that working with the jobs of the future, um, we could do that. That's what we have to identify is what, are, what do we need to train people for, uh, for those jobs so they can own their homes. Um, and we talked about creative home, home ownership. Um, there's also ways to do, um, to do other programs as well. Um, if you, there's another program that if you live in the home for 10 years, you get X amount of dollars to purchase, be able to use it for another down payment. Thank you. Okay, so initiatives for affordable housing. First of all, out of our candidates, I don't think any of us have a monopoly on knowledge about affordable housing and what we should always do. And I can see just from the question and listening to all our answers that if elected to an at-large position, position on next city council, I want to sit down with Worcester Common Ground and get an education on this. I want to sit down with the Maine South CDC. We have several organizations out there who are specialists in housing. So those are the people I want to talk to. Those are the people who should advocate and maybe educate city officials about this topic. So I, I don't have all the answers. It's a tough question. I don't have all the answers, but I'm willing to learn. In my remaining few seconds, though, I want to go back to the first question because I want to add something. I didn't want to wait till the last minute to do that. And that was about government and leadership role. One thing. If you look at the candidates for at-large city council and school committee, there are six seats on the city council at large. There are eight candidates. In fact, we're really down to seven because one says he's no longer campaigning. So seven candidates for six seats. There's a problem. There's a problem for the city of Worcester right there. Let's go to the school committee. The school committee has six seats also. And there are seven candidates. So basically we have one each, each body, we have one more candidate. There's problems there. I don't know if it's because we're doing a great job. I don't know if it's because people say, I'm not gonna put myself through that. If you read blogs and so on, you know, people get really tortured through blogs and articles and so on. I think there should be though, there should be term limits all the way down from president down to school committee, city council. We have to change the charter. There should be term limits. So we encourage more people to run for office. Thank you. I'm going to take a little bit of a detour on this answer, but I've given this answer a lot of thought and it's come up over and over again on the council. So I'm going to, and I'm going to put it on the, I'm going to put some of the responsibility on affordable housing issues on the doorstep of our, of our state house. Um, communities are supposed to have 10% affordable housing. There's no carrot, there's no stick. What do I mean by that? Say like Worcester has close to 15%. We don't get anything extra from the state by having more. Some people suggest we even have more than that. And then all the communities around us, Shrewsbury, Holden, Paxton, you can go online, look at their numbers. They're insignificant, two to 3%. There's no stick in having less than 10%. 
So it's really unfair for those that need affordable housing and for um, gateway cities like Worcester to be the only ones stepping up to the plate and providing affordable housing. That doesn't mean we shouldn't do it, but it means there's something wrong at the state level when other communities can wash the hands of that responsibility and urban centers like Worcester take on more of that responsibility. Having said that, I don't think gentrification, when it happens downtown, should displace people. I think we should have enough affordable housing units for people to remain in the city. Uh, everybody that wants to live in the city should be able to stay in the city. Having said that, we have a foreclosure crisis. We have empty uh, three-deckers where not every floor is rented out. And we have carriage houses in the older neighborhoods with older homes that sit vacant. Communities like Newton, Massachusetts ease their zoning restrictions and say there's a building behind your backyard that you can rent out to somebody. We can do better making more places available which will help those that need affordable places to live. But we need to start at the state in changing the way communities are rewarded and punished for not living up to that 10% responsibility.